he may have been the one to have booked Brock Lesnar and Omos for WrestleMania? This is on the WrestlingHeadlines.com site. I'm just throwing that over there to them because this has popped up in a bunch of different places, including surely on your Twitter feeds, but conflicting reports on the WrestleMania 39 match with Brock Lesnar and Omos. A new report from Russell Votes indicates that WWE Chairman Vince McMahon was the one who pushed for Lesnar versus Omos to happen. The report included a gif of McMahon and stated the match was the idea of one specific powerful person who pushed it through. However, a recent report from Fightful noted how word from within WWE noted how word from within WWE said that McMahon did not come up with Lesnar versus Omos. This was said when there was strong internal speculation on whether or not McMahon was back working with the WWE creative team. While Fightful had sources who spoke to both sides of the narrative, PW Torch's Wade Keller said that he was told flat out that McMahon is not back in creative. And obviously, this has been a subject of discussion on this show, talking about how much influence that Vince McMahon is exerting right now. And this all goes back to December and that Wall Street Journal article, and I cannot help but go back to that whole deal where basically, in hindsight now, is like a test balloon coming in about Vince not being happy, he stepped down, thinking he could have weathered everything. He's he's getting some people around him, and then we get the reports that come out in January about essentially a hostile takeover of his own company as the, the main stockholder. And look, I know it wasn't a quote-unquote hostile takeover, but when a guy is voted against unanimously by his board of directors to come back and then, you know, changes all of the rules so he can come back, well, you know, I, 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 some people could take that possibly as hostile. But as soon as that happened, everything kind of opened up on, all right, how much is he going to be involved in creative? When's he going to be back in creative? And obviously there's been the story about the sale too, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But Brian Solomon, my friend uh, who I work with on the Wrestling News, he wrote the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Book of the Year this year about the Sheik. Uh, wrote on Twitter on January 18th, since August, I've been driving to Stanford on business during early evenings going by Titan Tower on I-95. The fourth floor corner suite, Vince's office, was always dark. I missed a few weeks, but went back tonight. When I drove by the tower, the lights in the corner suite were on. Knock, knock, who's there? Ric Flair. Ric Flair who? No, Ric Flair who? <laughs> I didn't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> Bailey. Bailey who? We Bailey made it home in time to watch SmackDown That's Live. That's not how knock jokes work. <laughs> we Bailey? What does that mean? She's small. It's <laughs> we barely made it home. Oh, we barely made it <laughs> <laughs> Wow, your Invisalign made you dumb. <laughs> Why did the referee... Referee's feet smell when he was working because he was a doody, doodle. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> because he was a doodle. His feet smelled because he was a doodle. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. What? See, what? These, these, what? These are so dumb that they're funny. Am I high? I don't. I, I drove here. I think I was sober when I got here. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.